I was in the middle of my 14ers project and I was on this peak called Mount Evans. There was like mist, all the rocks were covered in rime, it had just snowed, it was super cold, windy. And it had taken me hours to get there and it was a long, really hard day. And it just kind of hit me at that moment, like this is something that I fought for in the military, this public land. And so that moment right there was like, you know, from now on, any chance I get, any route I can take to keep fighting for these lands, I'll do it. Josh's skill set is both in the mountains and in interacting with people. Super charismatic, super personable, and so he's able to showcase the land and the mountains, but also speak to issues about climate change and public lands. That's probably what strikes me the most, besides his ability to not feel pain, uh, never quit, uh, <laughs> his legs don't get tired. <laughs> in the military, you don't see like creed, color, religion, you know, political stance. You don't really see that stuff. We're all just fighting together for a cause. So anyone, anytime, I'll take them out climbing, I'll take them out skiing, whatever. How do you get people to care? You show them the environment so they can see firsthand the effects that are taking place. For instance, in Colorado, one, one thing that we have here, and a lot of Western states, have a big beetle problem in the trees and in the forests. And it's such a shame to see that these natural cycles have been exacerbated anthropogenically. All these forests, they're just tinder boxes, just waiting to go up in flames. So the best way in my eyes to get more people to care about environmental issues is to bring them into public lands. Josh coming from a military background and a conservative background and understanding those ways of life and those ways of thinking, he's in a unique position to talk about public lands and not completely turn people off. Because I want to do as much as I possibly can, um, you know, working with nonprofits like uh, Western Resource Advocates, Protect Our Winners, going to DC, lobbying you know, using that voice. We need an approach to land management that balances uses, mitigates climate pollution, and prevents industries from speculating public lands owned and defended by all Americans. Thank you. Being an activist is speaking truth to power. And in this area, that power is the corporations that are here in the extractive industries. And the truth is that we all need these lands. So being an activist is speaking for that land and speaking for those people that rely on it. You know, the Sangre de Cristo range of Colorado, it's basically a spine, you know, the devil's backbone. It runs from Salida down to Fort Garland. The place is unreal. As a snowboarder, it, it draws me in. And last summer, the BLM was gonna sell some gas leases on about 18,000 acres of land that were positioned just a mile east of Great Sand Dunes National Park. What happened is people were aware of the situation. They were aware of oil and gas about to come in and start extracting, and they decided to stop it before it even started. Putting up a fight and like continuing to show up is one of the hardest parts. But if you just keep showing up and keep fighting for what you actually care about, you'll get that victory eventually. One little symbol that's telling you you're on the right path, that's what keeps you going. That's what keeps you driving. There's so many different ways to take up this fight and you know different ways of activism. You can go to rallies, you can you know write into your government. You can just take somebody outside. But whatever it is that you do and you like doing it, continue to do that. Just continue to do that and bring more people in with you. Because if it's a solitary fight, you're not gonna win. We gotta fight this one together. <laughs>